Certainly appreciate the good songs and prayers, and I'd ask for your continued prayers. We're going to take a reading lesson in the book of Matthew in the sixth chapter. Uh, the Lord here is doing the speaking. And we're going to start at verse 5. It said, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, I, uh, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men not their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now with my mistakes in reading, that's verses 5 through 15 of Matthew 6 for a reading lesson. I go about once a year, uh, a couple years ago, getting close to a couple years ago, I had a Minor health scare, I guess minor. I didn't die, so I consider it minor. And uh, they'd done a bunch of blood work on me, and I don't eat healthy or anything, so I thought this is, this is going to be bad when they start telling me. So I have to go every year. And uh, my whole family knows that if it's got sugar in it, I'll eat. Uh, and they say, you're going to be a diabetic. Everybody tells me that. So this last time I thought, you know what, they might be right. Well, my sugar was perfect, which I was thankful for. But they started telling me about all these other things, and I know less about medicine and what doctors tell you than anything. But over here where I went, they said, now, Kevin, your B12's a little low, and your folate's a little low. I don't even know what folate is. But they said, you need to take some vitamins to increase that so that your levels will be where they need to be. So I said... All right, so I went to the store, and I got me those, and ever since, I've been taking one every day. I don't know what those things are doing for me, but they say I'm going to feel better if I do them. And I trust them that they know what they're talking about. They're doctors, they went to school, so I, I trust them that if they tell me this will help me to feel overall better, then that, that's what I'll do. I want to tell you, if you want to feel better, you'll pray. If your prayer level is not in the right order and high enough, you ain't going to feel good. Your life ain't going to be good. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that the reason that we don't see things happen like we wish we did is because prayer is missing from our lives. And I ain't saying that we don't pray some, but I'm talking about really praying to our Lord. Here it says, and when thou prayest. The Lord's expectation is not if you'll pray, but that you should pray. He has an expectation of the saved individuals, certainly those that are members of the Lord's church, that we're going to pray to Him. He wants us to pray to Him. Now I look and I think, well, how many times a day is good enough? To pray to the Lord. Well, there is an example in the scriptures of a man named Daniel. And the scriptures, it, it taught here that there was a time where Darius had wrote a writing and they had conned him into it, so to speak, that nobody would ask any petition of any God or any man except for the king for 30 days. And we find that Daniel 
didn't do any different. It never done. And in Daniel 6 and 10, it says, And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open, in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Now, he didn't do this out of spite. He done what he always done. I'm going to tell you what, this is a very good example that we need to pray more than once a day. Y'all, there ain't nobody amening on that. I ain't even getting a head knock. That we need to be praying more than once a day. That we need to start out our day in prayer. We need to pray throughout the day. And we need to pray by the time we go to bed. We need to be calling on our God. And we need to make this a common practice for us individually. And I believe if we'll make it a common practice individually, and you said a whole bunch of people in the Lord's church doing the same thing, I believe God is listening. I believe He's listening every time we utter words towards Him. Now there's times when I pray, I really feel like He's right there. And then as people say, sometimes the prayer don't get no further than the top of my head. I won't tell you, every time we call on the Lord, He's listening. He is listening when we call upon Him. And I want to encourage you to begin praying every single day. More than one time a day, begin to make it a practice in your life to call upon the Lord because it'll make a difference in your life. It'll make a difference in your home life. It'll make a difference in your work life. It'll make a difference in your spiritual life. It'll make a difference at Friendship Church if y'all all start praying. Say, well, what difference will it make? I'm going to tell you what. Daniel is a prime example of an individual who had a practice of praying. Not just to say that he did. He wanted to pray. He wanted to talk to the Lord. Here he was a man that was taken captive. He was taken captive. His prayer life was so that when trouble come before him, that he didn't just succumb to anything that they threw at him. They wanted to fatten him up with things of this world of what they could offer to get him dependent upon the king, and he refused it. You know why he was able to refuse the things of this world? His prayer life was in order with God, and God supplied him the grace to refuse it. You might think, I can't, I can't break loose. If you'll pray to God, He can help you break loose the things that's got a hold of you. Yeah. He can help you to refuse things of this life that are a hindrance to you. You can't do it on y'all. Heard a good sermon several years ago of a preacher. He, he had been smoking. He was talking about the time in his life he was smoking and how many times he had tried to quit on his own. And he couldn't do it. He said, and then I said, Lord, will you help me too? And he asked the Lord to help him to quit that that he was doing and he desired of it of God and God gave him the grace to quit. I'm going to tell you what, there's probably something we all need to quit. Something we all need to let go of and God can give us the grace to be able to do that but we're going to have to ask Him. Now you've got to really want to get rid of it first. And you've got to want to be do that for the Lord. Now Daniel didn't just do that. We find that the Lord used him to interpret dreams before the king. Nobody else knew what was going on. They didn't have an understanding. But God gave him an understanding. I'm going to tell you what. If you want to have a better understanding of this word, pray and then read it. And ask God to help you to understand it. And if you say, well, I'll do that every now and again. Make it a common practice. Before you pick the book up, say, Lord, help me. Get down and ask the Lord to help you to understand more of what this book is. If you don't have the Lord's help, you'll never understand it. Spiritually discerned. That's what the Scriptures say. So Daniel's prayer life made a difference in his ability to understand the Word of God. I'm going to tell you what, preachers ain't the only ones that need that. The church needs that. 
The church needs to have their prayer life in order so that we can understand the Word of God. Here is Daniel prayed that three times a day and they come and they cast him off there into that lion's den. Why did God send the angels? Because his prayer life was in order. I'm going to tell you what, prayer is going to make a difference. And I'm going to tell you what, not praying makes a difference. Not praying. Y'all not agree with that? Not praying is making a difference. Thinking about it is not praying. Did y'all know that? Talking to me about it ain't praying. Talking to your mama, your daddy, your brothers and sisters about something that's before us or something we're worried about, that's not praying. Daddy, I would talk to my dad, and I do almost every day, and I'd have a worry or concern, and he'd say, Son, worry less and pray more. I'd get tore up about something, he'd say, Worry less and pray more. I'm going to tell you what, we need to shut this mouth to one another and open it towards God. It's what we need to be doing. Because not doing that, I'm going to tell you what, it's a hindering us. Y'all won't know what the hindrance is. I'm going to tell you a good part of it is we ain't praying like we need to. It says, when thou prayest, where can you pray at? You ever thought about that? Where can you pray? I'm going to tell you this fella prays in the truck. I pray in a car. I like getting on that road, cutting everything off, and I just can talk to the Lord. It's just like that's my little closet. That's the place where nothing else exists between me and the Lord. That's a good place to pray. Yeah. You can pray on a tractor, can't you? Yeah. You can pray on a tractor. I've heard of them tell us about up here at the old shirt factory about how they prayed while they was working. You can pray to God wherever you want to. This world says you can't pray here and you can't pray there. I beg to differ. You can pray anywhere you want to call upon the Lord. There's not a place that this world has that is off limits to you or I calling upon God. So, well, schools won't let us. Well... <laughs> If the Lord gets on you to pray, I'd say go ahead and pray. Oh, yeah. So, well, uh, they, they won't like it. I uh, know a young man just, well, he was not as young as he once was. When he finally told he'd been saved, he got saved in school in class. You can't, you know, we think prayer is always the out loud thing. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what prayer is from this heart right here. And you cannot stop it. You cannot uh, dry it up unless we refuse to do it. I'm going to tell you what. I'd say you that are teachers, I would pray while I was at school somewhere along the way. If you're a nurse, I'd pray. If you work in an office, I'd pray. If you work in a factory, I'd pray. I used to work at Fleetwood Homes. Went out there on the line one day. was uh, looking at a house they said they had a problem with. And they asked me to come down there. I don't know what they thought I was going to tell them. But I went out there. When I got time, and as I got closer, I could hear something. And under there was an old Baptist praying to God. Didn't matter who else was around. He was under that trailer calling on the Lord. I'm going to tell you what. That raised that man's stock in my eyes real high. Why? Because he wasn't ashamed to call on the Lord. I'm telling you, sometimes we're ashamed to call on Him. We're ashamed to be heard. We're ashamed to have our head bowed over a bologna sandwich before we eat it, thanking God. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. If we're ashamed of Him, He'll be ashamed of us. We need to pray. Work down there at school. Been there a while, and I was worried about something. The women I work with are saved or... Both of them then at that time, they saved the other one. Just down. And they said, what's wrong? I said, oh, I'm just burdened about something. I said, I, I, need to, I need to go pray. They said, go to the file room. That's the best place here. They already had used it. They had already been to a place where they could shut everything else off 
I went back there and in that floor, the Lord was there. We need to find a place to call on the Lord. It worked. We spend a lot of time there, don't we? We need to find a place to call on the Lord there. I'm going to tell you what, you need to find a place at home to call on the Lord. Out on your farm, out in your yard, you need to find a place to call on God. Praying is important to your life. Don't y'all believe that? When you drift from God, how is it? I guarantee you when you start drifting, it's because prayer is absent. It'll be absent from your life. Y'all probably heard me tell this. I don't know if I said it here or on recording. I don't know. I do so much now. I, I, I don't know what I said were. But out in the lot there, the little acreage that we had, the family farm, we'd be going down there with our pa. We'd hang off the back of the tractor. We thought we was big stuff. Pa'd slow down. There's this little spot. where Uncle Virgil would come and there was a bucket turned upside down. He'd say, boys, don't ever bother that bucket. Pa kept that cleaned out for him. So no snakes or nothing. He kept it cleaned out for a space. That was holy ground. And when there was trouble in my family among our cousins, I remember one time one of my cousins was having marital problems. They couldn't find her. And the call came in. She's off in the lot. She was down there because she believed the Lord heard there. Why? An example had been set. Yeah. Found a place to pray. I'm going to tell you what. I'd find a place to pray. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have one that your kids don't know about neither. I would want my children to know and my grandchildren to know if I were you where I prayed. So that when they passed it, that that come to their mind. I ain't been out there on that piece of property in years and years. But in my heart it settled. That's where the man prayed. He put a time and effort into calling on the Lord. I'm going to tell you what. You parents, you grandparents, you need to find you a spot. You ain't got one. And you need to be calling on the Lord. You need to be talking to the Lord. I'm going to tell you what. It makes a difference. Let your children catch you praying. Don't worry about it. Boy, I remember as a boy growing up, my mama, she wasn't no perfect woman by a long shot. She'd say that if she's here. You know, if she was alive, she would not want me saying anything about her. I come in hollering for her one summer, Mama, Mama! And I could hear a faint voice. And I went to the edge there in the hall right at the door and I could hear her calling on the Lord by the bed. She was praying for me and my brothers and called out by me. I'm going to tell you, I stood there for a little bit and I listened to her and I slipped out. She didn't know I was there. She wasn't there so that I'd hear her. She was practicing a prayer life. And it made a difference in this little boy's life. It made a difference. I'm going to tell you what, we need good praying mamas and grandmas. Amen. Ain't no telling how many people's been kept out of trouble because their mama and grandmama began to call on the Lord. When you pray, when you pray, I've got the expectation that after today, y'all going to go pray. I've got the confidence in you that you've not come this way just for show, but you've come this way to hear whatever the Lord wants you to hear. And I expect that you'll leave this place with this on your heart. And you'll find your place and you'll go pray. When you pray, there's a lot of people, they've got road out prayers. I wouldn't give you a nickel for a road out prayer. I wouldn't give you a nickel. I've been to functions in life, and man, they were going to have you do an invocation or a, a whatever, say a grace over food, him whip out, or her whip out a piece of paper and read it. I thought, good gracious. I barely know what I'm going to say when I step up in the pulpit. I can't imagine thinking I'd write that out. I'm going to tell you what, that right there is a hypocrite's what that is. That needs to come from right here, don't y'all think? Amen. The Scriptures teach me 
that the Spirit of God makes intercession with us when we're praying and it helps us with groanings that cannot be uttered. I'm going to tell you what. Prayer is from the heart. It's from the heart when you're lost. It's from the heart when you're saved. And I will say this to these children. You ever come across somebody that tells you that they repeated a prayer after somebody and that's when they got saved? I want you to know that that ain't right. I've read them. What the modern Baptist world says is a model prayer and I wouldn't give you two cents for it. In fact, it needs to be a match to put to it and burn up because it ain't no count. That prayer that these little boys and girls is going to need to pray one day is going to come from their heart. They can't say what we tell them to say. Do you know that? They got to say what's on their heart towards God. He knows how to hear. Glad he hears. Some people like to be heard and seen and elevated. Lord, Lord wants us, it says here, but when thou prayest, enter in thy closet. And when thou shut the door. Now does that mean he wants us to get in a room? Sometimes we might need to do that. Shut the world out. But that's what he really means, is shut the world out. That's hard to do. It's easy to say, isn't it? It's easy to say, well, I'm not going to have on my mind when I'm praying about all this other stuff. And if y'all were honest as I can be, there's been times I've prayed my mind was just this wonder, just a drifting. When we pray the Lord to truly hear us, guess what? He wants us to focus solely on Him. And that's it. Not another thought, not another person, nothing. Focusing on the Lord. So we need to enter in our closet. We need to shut out the world. It says here, if we'll pray to Him in secret, He'll open us, uh, reward us openly. Don't use vain repetitions. You know, I've heard people say I don't have pretty words to say. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've heard a lot of testimonies in my life. And I've never heard one where they testified and the Lord was in it that wasn't beautiful. Never heard of one. I can think of a sister. She's done gone on to glory. And she would say, y'all going to have to forgive me. I don't know how to talk. And then she'd just make the prettiest talk I'd ever heard. I remember as a boy, I'm going to tell you what, she wasn't worried about how it sounded. She wasn't worried about the vain repetition. She wasn't worried about the formality. She wanted to get down to what the Lord had her to say. I'm going to tell you what, that's what we need to worry about praying. We need to worry about getting right down to the nitty gritty and talking to the Lord. That old song is have a little talk with Jesus. Have a little talk with Jesus. I'm going to tell you what, we need to have some talks with our Lord. It goes on and it says here, after this manner, therefore ye pray. Now this is not what we should pray, but how we should pray. How we should. Our Father, which... Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I believe when we start calling on the Lord, we need to recognize His sovereignty, His holiness, and that He is our heavenly Father. He is not to be approached casually, but He is to be approached humbly. Realizing that He is God and that we are lowly man. I don't believe and I don't like, I don't know how y'all are, but I don't like somebody coming up to me asking me for something and acting like I owe them. Y'all like that? I'm going to tell you what, God don't want us to come to Him that way either. He wants us to come to Him humbly, realizing who He is and who we are. It says, Thy kingdom come. I'm going to tell you what, we need to realize, you know, everybody's worried about this country. I'm sitting right here and witnessing and looking at something that's higher than this country. The church of the true and living God. His kingdom right here reigns today and our king has never changed. It'll never have to come up for a vote. It'll never have to be anything to figure out who it's going to be. Everything's done, said and done. Our Father in heaven appointed His Son to be king over all things. 
You want to know who's over this country? God is and His Son. He's put all things under His feet. And I'm going to tell you what, He's the head of His church. I'll say this while I'm at it. You want to pray, have your prayer life right? You get in the Lord's church. If you've been saved and you've never joined the Lord's church anywhere, you're going to have a hard time getting through. You might say, well, why? I, hate, I can't find it. I know it's in the book. It's in the New Testament. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? If the Lord has laid it on your heart to join the Lord's church somewhere and you refuse to do it, ain't no need in asking Him for a thing. Amen. Ain't no need in asking Him. So well, I'm already a member. If you fail the Lord, He knocks on your heart to do something and you won't do it, ain't no need in asking Him. He's going to say you just keep on and you keep on and you keep on not doing what I ask you to do, but you want me to do for you. Tell you what, you better think about it. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's a hard one. It's hard to pray to the Lord and ask for His will to be done over our desire. It's tough when somebody you love is hurting. Somebody you love is sick. The danger is right there with them. It's hard to say, Lord, now we'll be done, isn't it? Yeah. There's a young man here. That, it was hard to say that. Because I wanted him to be well. We all wanted him to be well. Right. But at the end of the day, it's the Lord's will and not ours. When we submit ourselves to the will of God, Lord, your will be done in spite of us. Now I'm going to tell you what, we're coming right. Yeah. Coming just right the way that He wants us to. And I'll find in this book that if you abide in me, if you abide in me, it's in the book of John, then you shall ask whatever you desire, and I'll give it to you. I'm going to tell you what, if we'll get right in the Lord's church, right where the Lord wants us to be, we can have that desire, we can have that willingness that His will be done, and He'll give us exactly what we ask for. Did y'all believe that? That's what His book says. So His book ain't uh, a lie, so I know it's true. Give us this day our daily bread. How many of us just know right now that we've got food at the house? We all do, right? We all got food there. I'm going to tell you what. We are to not only be thankful for the food, but we need to recognize where that food comes from. There may be a time we don't know where our meal is going to come from, and we may be praying that to the very letter, Lord, give us some meat. Good. We need to recognize that every can, everything you've put up, Every piece of bread, every pinto bean comes from God. And thank Him for them. Thank Him for everything. Forgive us our debts. Wait a minute, now He's going to get in something I want to hear. We're going to have to ask the Lord to forgive us. Every day, forgive us of our sins. I'm going to tell you a very important part of prayer is repentance. A very important part. Repentance didn't stop for me as a nine-year-old boy. It just changed into what I was going to have to repent of. Not of my soul, but of the acts of this old flesh I've had to repent of. The failures towards my God I've had to repent of so that I could be right with Him. I'm going to tell you what, if you've got something standing between you and God, you might as well get her on out of the way. I find here in Psalm 66 and 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you've got sin in your heart, in your life, that you've not asked God to forgive you of, He ain't going to hear you. It stands between you and God. Let me go back one more on that. Oh, 59. 59, Isaiah 59 and 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that He cannot say... Neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. We love to quote that one. But what about this one? Because your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. 
I'm going to tell you what, if we get to sinning and we live a life that ain't pleasing to Him, that don't measure to the measuring stick of God, He will not hear us. He won't hear us. Will not hear us. Now think about that for a minute. That's a pretty big pill to swallow, isn't it? Because when trouble comes, who do you want to help you? Who do you want to help you when there's trouble? When your child's lost? When they're hurt? Something's went wrong. Who do you want to help you? Think about in those times, do you want anything standing between you and God? Son, you want Him right there in a split second, don't you? I'm going to tell you what. Our prayer life is in order. It needs to be in order. And that means repenting of the things we do wrong. And sometimes we... I can say for me, I can't speak for y'all. I'll do it. Lord, forgive me on the things I failed to do and the things I've done wrong. Y'all ever pray that general? I'm just going to cast a net and hope it catches it. You ever done that? And sometimes he'll get to weighing on me about something. He'll get to weighing on me. He ain't going to keep no general. He wants me to confess what I've done to him and ask his forgiveness of what I've done. I'm going to tell you what, and if I won't do it, he won't forgive me. And if he won't forgive me, then what he will he not do? Hear me for the other things that I need. I'm going to tell you what, there is no shape to be in. You can have something in your heart, anger, frustration, envy, strife, whatever it is. You don't have to get out here and get drunk to get separated from God. You don't have to get out here and commit adultery to get separated from God. You can just have something in your heart that God's not pleased with and He will not hear you till you ask Him to forgive you. It's just the truth. Now I'm going to tell you what, that's an awful place to be in. It's an awful place to be in. And you don't want to be there. But it says here, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. On down in the 14th to 15th, it says that for if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive yours. So I'm going to tell you something. You go to the Lord and you ask Him to forgive you something, and you're holding the grudge and you won't forgive somebody else, He's not going to hear you. He's not. Say, well, Brother Harrison, you're awfully cruel today. I'm doing this by the help of the Lord for your benefit. We don't need to have any alt in our heart, anything against anyone, whether a brother or sister, someone we work with, a family member. We need to let it go and put it in the Lord's hand. Say, but you don't know. Nobody can walk a mile in anybody else's shoes unless they've just been there. But I can tell you this fellow right here has had that in his heart before. Packed it around and packed it around. I wanted the Lord to forgive me, but I didn't want to forgive nobody else. I didn't want to let it go. And it was miserable. Always miserable. I don't know what it's like to be drunk, but I know what it's like to be miserable. And I was miserable. And when I had enough of it, I started asking him forgive me. But he still wanted me to let go. Now, I wanted to let it go, kind of. I wanted him to forgive me and still be mad at them. And I couldn't do it. But y'all have heard me tell it. And I, I mentioned this last night. I had some dogs and I carried down a bucket of dog food and a bucket of water. And I carried it down there on a Sunday morning. And I was coming up and those buckets felt as heavy. And there was nothing in them. It wasn't the buckets that was heavy. It was all that on me. And I said, Lord, I can't take it anymore. And I let them go, and this peace just rolled over me. A peace just rolled over me like I cannot describe. I let it all go, and He forgave me. Right then and there, He forgave me because I said, Lord, you take it. That's where we got to get, and that ain't easy to get. I carried that around for months. I'm going to tell you what, I don't advise it for any of you. It says here, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
I'm going to tell you what, we need to ask the Lord to help us with what we come in contact every day. Because the devil is going to try to tempt us. It ain't a matter if he will, he's going to. And you know who knows you better than yourself? Satan. He knows your very weakness. He knows your biggest vice. He knows the thing that aggravates you more than anything. He knows it all. And you need the Lord's help every day to not give in to that evil. I'll give just a little more and then I'll hush. Say, well, okay, we're there. What difference does it make collectively? You talking about a bunch of people pulling in the same direction? Our prayer lives where it needs to be and then the same burden is on us all when we get to praying, the Lord is listening. There was a time they put Peter in jail in the uh, 12th chapter of Acts. Herod had put him in jail and they looked and they thought, well, this is, uh, this is bad. It was bad. He had been in prison. You may have somebody today, they might not be in physical prison, but as far as Satan has got them, they're in prison. They're drug away. It might be a lost person. It might be somebody that's been saved and was a member here and don't come. Whatever it is. They don't have to be excluded to be in prison of the devil. And here we find in verse uh, 5, it says, Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. They all began to pray. There's another place over here in Acts in the fourth chapter where they had been told not to talk in the Lord's name that they all come together in one accord in unity and called on God. I'm going to tell you what we might need to start considering at Friendship Church is that we need to have prayer meetings. Yeah. Prayer meetings to get ourselves in the Lord's church right here back on track with Him. Get in the right order that we can pray and God hear us as one. Don't y'all want that? Yeah. Or do you kind of want that? Do you almost want that, but not completely? I'm going to tell you what. We need to call on the Lord. We need to call on Him as one. Because you never know when trouble's at the door. You never know when something else is going to come. 